Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the White Hatter YouTube News Show. I'm Brandon. I'm Darren. I'm all dressed up. Because you just finished. I just finished a live webinar with a high school on our leveraging program. So we quickly made the change on the set. We're good to go. <laughs> Woo! White Hatter team. We uh, are busy this month. Yeah, like, I, you know, I'm actually quite surprised at how many schools have now connected with us wanting to do virtual. Like, I just did a high school now, two of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are doing a parents' presentation tonight. And mm -hmm. then I got another school actually up in the Yukon. We're doing Yukon tomorrow. Woo! Uh, UConn. Hey, did you know that UConn is on the West Coast? They were following Pacific Standard Time, but they voted to keep the same time all, all yeah, the Yeah, that's probably going to be this is probably our last year of daylight savings. Well, we were supposed to do it, but the government blamed COVID for not doing it. UConn could do it. How come we couldn't? It makes sense, right? Like, why <laughs> Why do we keep popping forward and jumping back? Like, it makes no sense to me. But we're, we're busy. Well, the issue is you have to have everyone kind of, you know. You would, yeah, I mean. Everyone I mean, in the time zone kind of has to agree know, to it. I know, I know, I know. Because we're doing another one. I think it's this week or next week in Saskatchewan. And, you know, they're two hours ahead. And we're just trying to figure it out sometimes. Because, you know, mom has left the scheduling, as you know. has <laughs> left it up to me to do. And so I'm kind of still learning that process <laughs> and stuff. But. Uh, we're busy. We're, yes. It's it's kind of cool because I didn't know if we would be getting as many contracts as we were because of COVID, but uh, full credit to you. I think the word's getting out about the platform that we're using. And I, Today, really good example, the uh, the teachers today, mm -hmm. I asked what you guys think and they thought that the production was awesome, right? Just because of the way that you've set it up and it's not just like uh, what people used to do with Zoom events, right? Where it's a talking head in front of a webcam mm -hmm. in front of a desk, right? That's not what we do. So yeah. anyway, so that's why I'm all dressed up. You know, <laughs> I got I got our suit on. It's our okay. branding, right? It's okay. our branding. Uh, let's talk about some uh, news stories that <laughs> popped up this week. In the news. Uh, first news story of relevance, I think many gamers at least are talking about, is uh, the ah. <laughs> EA's $5 million fine in the Netherlands because they deemed loot boxes from EA was You talked gambling. about this the last show, right? Uh, was no, last I didn't. No, oh. I, think, I think you mentioned it in one of one of your live presentations. Oh yeah, we talk about loot boxes, right? Where yeah. There's some really good uh, research now coming out showing that loot boxes is uh, kind of very similar to online gambling. Yeah, I and have I know my that you, I know you have, I know, I know that you have some thoughts about this. So, you use the comparison of Pokemon cards, was it? Uh, the, the whole argument with boxes is basically it, it's a essentially a form of gambling. Is the arguments right. people are making that you know you're paying, you're giving money to randomly get a surprise, or actually gamble. Grand Theft Auto is a good example, right? Yeah, well, they have casino yeah. built into there. Yeah. Um, where you real world money being converted into a physical or digital item that you don't have any information or any uh, percentages on in terms of what you're likely to get back. Mm -hmm. um, so many, uh, many gamers hate these mechanics and many people are fighting against EA as one of the big uh, contributors of So it's kind of like boxes. pull tabs. Thinking yeah. boomer, right? Boomer's yes. like a pull tab things. You know, you put in five dollars, you get a then you pull, and you don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes you win something, sometimes you don't. Yeah, well, the, see, that's my reservation in the whole it's gambling loot boxes thing because I mean, if loot boxes and video games are gambling, then I don't think they're saying video games are gambling, but loot boxes being used in video games. Yeah, loot boxes in video games. Right. If that is being considered gambling, then by that logic of mechanics, so should Pokemon cards, uh, Magic cards, uh, Kinder Egg surprises. By that kinder logic... Kinder Egg surprises? You know you can't get Kinder Eggs in the United States? I know. That's weird. There was thing. a lawsuit in regards to choking. choking. Yeah, yeah. Now, when we go down and teach in the United States, people often say, do you guys still have Kinder Eggs? Yeah, we have them up here in Canada, right? That's... A, Think, yeah. Right? Uh, so by that, like by, by, by the mechanical logic of, of how those products work, same thing as kind of loot boxes. So in, in mm. that's my reservation in the whole argument. Like I think loot boxes absolutely suck in games, especially games you pay premium dollar for. Free games, I'm a little more lenient on. Premium games, you pay money for upfront. Do you think it's more problematic for younger people who don't actually understand? The dynamics behind loot boxes that are more prone. Oh, most than? certainly. Yeah. Oh, most certainly. I think yeah. the mechanic itself in games that are premium is absurd. I mean, you and you and I both know that we follow the evidence, right? Mm -hmm. Peer reviewed research. And it's very interesting to see how some really good reputable researchers that we follow are saying that, yeah, you know what, this this is right on the razor's edge of of gambling. Yeah, right? but then companies like EA and the courts have said, well, I, we don't accept those facts uh, yeah. in the standard of what of rhetoric in 2020. Now, didn't you say there's a class action lawsuit going on in Canada now? Yeah, there's, an, there's one in Canada happening as well. It's apparently making its way through the courts, so we'll see how that turns out. But again, I have reservations on the whole definition of gambling. 
the, the mechanic wise in games are premium it's absurd um, but mm. um, there mechan- you have it. Mechan- if I were EA I'm not a lawyer but if I, if I were EA's lawyers I would go fine okay we're loot boxes cool Mutually assured destruction. If I'm gonna, if I'm being taken down, I'm taking down Kinder, Kinder eggs. eggs. Kinder egg surprises. Kinder I'm coming eggs. for you. <laughs> I'm coming for you, Kinder egg surprises. <laughs> I mean, if I were EA lawyers, that's kind of like like the mentality I would kind of take. Yeah. Cal, what do you think? <laughs> I just mentioned this yes. name again. He sent me a, he sent me a message saying, "Are you gonna? Yeah, hey Cal, what do you think about Kinder eggs? Yeah, loot boxes. Uh, there you go. Mechanically, yes. Yeah. Interesting. So, Interesting. It'll be interesting to follow yeah. this one and the Canadian one. Yep. Uh, it'll be really interesting to follow. When, uh, is it scheduled to go before the courts yet? Do you know? I don't believe so. They're probably in full discovery at this point. Maybe. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. What uh, else? Okay. Uh, what else? Um, Amazon. Like probably the biggest retailer in the world I right sent now. This one to you, right? Uh, you did. Yeah. Uh, which you Amazon? You know, trying to be the most secure company out there. Yada yada yada. Yada yada yada. Amazon fires employee for leaking uh, customer data. Yada, yada, so. Yada, yada. Uh, interesting story, you know. Yeah, it's we said link. this for we said we've said this forever, right? Like you you can have a billion dollar security system in place, <laughs> but the weakest link is always the human link. Human link. And here's an example, right? Like I'm I'm sure Amazon has spent millions, if not billions, of dollars on security and safety and all that kind of stuff. And all it took was one employee. one person sharing emails with clients with and, a third party. And you know what? Like when I was in law enforcement, we knew that organized crime would look for people who had access to information, like in the motor vehicle branch, right, where they would pay employees money under the table to get information, mm-hmm. right? So, and that's all it takes is one employee mm-hmm. that doesn't have a strong moral compass to do something like that. So, I want to know what the third party is. Yeah. Probably the government. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. It was probably a spy. Yeah. That's, yeah. where's my tinfoil hat? Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, the only thing we'll share was email, so nothing super sensitive like passwords, but again, if you've watched the show for long enough, you know, emails being a key identifying piece of information can lead to more information. And you think about this, room, right? Like I, another case uh, with uh, uh, credit card skimmers, right? Like I know of a case that was investigated local here in Victoria, where a person who was working at a gas station, uh, organized crime approachment said, uh, "For here's thirty-five thousand dollars in cash. Mm-hmm. If you allow us to take the credit card reader that you have, unplug it, and just plug mm-hmm. this one in," like, and he took the thirty-five thousand dollars. He got caught. He got caught, but I mean, it's big business, right? Big business. Mm-hmm. So you, you could imagine, like, I wonder what he. I wonder if he was selling this stuff. Right? To be determined. Yeah, to be determined. Or it'll be. I bet you he was. Like, why take the risk? Or was a spy? Oh, uh, <laughs> where's our tinfoil hat? I know, right? Uh, oh, 2020. Well, this is interesting. It's been a year. Um, yeah. GitHub. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know what? That brings up another fact. You know, I really didn't want to turn back my clock. Because I wanted to get out of 2020 as quickly as I could, right? Like we just added another hour into the year. Like I've, you know, this COVID thing that's going on. Like holy. Isn't there an asteroid that might hit Earth tomorrow? Really? Apparently, I saw it on. uh, Apparently, Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about it. Have you set up the bunker yet that we've got? It's an asteroid that that will be destroyed in the atmosphere. It's not big enough to cause any damage. Right. So we don't have to launch missiles at it and that kind of stuff. Send some cowboys. Yeah, send some cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> that was a movie joke for those of you. To... Cal got the joke, though. I bet you Cal did. Cal, who were the actors in that movie where they sent actors onto an and onto an asteroid to destroy it? Get back to us, Cal. Anyways, back. So this this next story you have, it's this is an interesting right, so one, right? GitHub threatens to ban users who bypass a YouTube DL takedown. So okay, so context. Okay, yeah, context. Uh, YouTube DL, that is a piece of code that's been shared and reused by coders. So GitHub is um, it's a social network, basically, where coders right. and programmers can put up code. So a place I would never it. go. Yeah, it's a place <laughs> where you would go. Uh, <laughs> they would share there. it. They would. They would. Do they have pictures in that? On that site, I think you can put your pictures. Yeah. Okay, maybe I would go there then. Right. Um, so yeah, you share code, develop code, and basically YouTube DL is a piece of code that allows people to download videos directly from YouTube. Right, because there are several programs out there, open source, that you can do that. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. not that difficult. Right. Uh, now, what's interesting is that uh, earlier in October, uh, GitHub was served a DMCA takedown notice from the Recording Industry Association of America, Incorporated. <laughs> Uh, basically, a company that represents the music media industry. They are going hard, right? And they served GitHub a DMCA takedown legal notice saying, hey, legally remove this 
tool because it violates copyright law. Which, I mean, if you've watched our last show, we talked about Nintendo going after a company selling only tools that can potentially allow people but to pirate games. I thought the DMC... I'm pretty sure the DMCA is not specific to tools. I don't think so. It's only specific to the actual media itself. Yes. This is only... So, I don't, so this is users point. are... You know, angry so what they're trying this. to do is they're trying to go after companies that are selling tools. Well, they, well see to download well, because if you da- if, if if you purchase the tool, which is legal to do, but then if you use that tool to download and store illegally, the DMCA is trying to say, well, it's the tool that is causing the copyright breach. Yeah. So therefore, well, Nintendo in the last show we I talked about uh, how they went after the company because they were selling the tool. Right. This is an open source, freely available tool. Yeah. I, and they're using DMCA to go after the tool. It'll be interesting. I think this is going to be one of those ones where money, you know, they're going to try and bury them with lawyer fees. Right? Well, here's the thing. Well, yeah, so GitHub is threatening to ban users who bypass. So the users right now are trying to covertly share the code and repost the code because they think it's uh, utterly absurd that this right. is happening. Right. But GitHub is the one that's being um, on the been. hook. Yeah. Although, here's the thing. GitHub is a... Is, is not a publisher in the same way you can't sue Facebook because someone posts an anti-Semitic comment, right? Hmm. They're protected that way. This is going to be an interesting one. So, you know, going after a tool under the DMCA? I think mm-hmm. GitHub just doesn't want to get involved in the courts and they're like, hey, we're just going to ban oh, all yeah, the users. Because, you know, the, the recorder, or whatever their name are, the recording industry, they <laughs> got big money behind them, right? So, I mean, and in the United States, it's like a certain president who likes to try and bury their competition with the use of lawyer and fees, right? If I have more money than you are, then it's in your best interest to settle because if not, I'm going to bankrupt you, mm-hmm. right? So you got to wonder if that's kind of the angle they may be taking here because I I don't know if they're going to be successful on this one. Like, it's a tool. It's a, uh, it's, it, and the use of the tool could violate DMCA. Good. Or the tool could be used in... In, in a good in, way. In... Um, in public use in yeah, regards I mean, to, oh, I want to download this to preserve it, to comment on it later. Yeah, and under the DMCA, I can still take certain clippets of movies and it's not a violation of the DMCA. Right? As long as it is within fair use. Correct. Yeah, you're commenting on it, yeah. you are repurposing it and yeah. creating a new content from it. That's what we see in a lot of the online, like John Oliver is a good example, yeah. where he takes clips and that kind of stuff. And, right? they're, so. and they're also protected under media. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. News media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, protection. So anyways. Um, hey, are we news media now? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't know what the process is to be registered for that. Oh. I think there's a registration process. All right. I don't know. Cal, what do you think? <laughs> Just use his name a second time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's interesting. Yeah, it is. All yeah. right. What else? Uh, so your free tools may be taken away uh-huh. because they can be used for legal purposes. Yeah, we'll see. We'll yeah, see. that's we'll interesting. Um, next story. Oh, that's the all-seeing eye. <laughs> Why are Is this cultish? Are we going to talk about <laughs> no. the cult? It, it's kind of, it symbolizes like the Google Drive oh, um, okay. color. So basically, a uh, new interesting scam coming out of Google Drive. So what's Google Drive? Uh, For basically, those who don't know, t- share everybody what Google Drive doesn't is. doesn't have a Google account. What? That's some fine. people may not Google know Drive what Google Drive is. The boomers stuff. might not. It's Google sharing an online document storage platform. You get five gigs free as a free Google user. So it's a cloud. It's a cloud. It's a cloud. And you can collaboratively work on documents, right. which is what this story is all and about. And a cloud, just just to be clear, a cloud is not some magical thing that's floating in the air where all like data goes. It's actually uh, a Physical data Physical place, yes. It's a farm, right? It's yeah. a server farm. Yeah. Okay. So in this particular story, uh, scammers mm. uh, are using Google Drive's collaborative workspace environment to send notifications to mobile users. So uh, context-wise, Google Drive, is you, you, it's like word processor, but online, it's right. Google. It's a fantastic th- thought-out program. Yeah, it allows you to share. Collaborative, work yeah, together. You can cool. add something, I've I can add it. something at the same time. Yeah, I've used it. It's a great platform. Yeah. Now, you can add your email as a user, and then you can have notifications set up where basically any change on a document, you get sent notifications. Like a lot of businesses are using this during COVID where multiple people are working from home now. Yeah. And you can just share that document, work on it together, right? Yeah. Okay. So what's interesting here is that because notifications aren't sent through email, if you're a mobile user and you have notifications turned on on your phone, mm. you get sent a notification message right away. So what scammers are doing is they're building these collaborative working documents. They're filling it with, uh, with spam links, uh, malicious links. And they're adding people as collaborative users. They then get a notification if they have notifications turned on as mobile users. But 
if I don't know this person is creating this document, why would I join it? You would think, but if I'm impersonating, say, your bank or a social network. So is this kind of like a phishing attack? Now? It's it's a phishing attack. That's what it is. Uh, but it's a different because it's using notifications and not email. And most consumers are more so aware of looking out for scam emails. So is this a big deal? Like, it's, like what's going on? Uh, Google recognizes this? Google said they that they are aware it? of the issue and they're working on trying to solve the issue. But the question is, how do you solve it? And, and what yeah. threshold do you put there as filtering that you block notification? Because you don't want to block legitimate people who are legitimately trying to work together on a document who need notifications back and forth. But how do you know it's actually Darren Lawyer that you're communicating with? Because somebody could be pretending to be me. It could be. I mean, in, in my, in, generally, I think the best defense is understanding if you're not currently working on a Google Drive document with someone and you get a notification from Google Drive saying, hey, someone added you or there's, there's yeah, an update. Yeah, especially if that somebody hasn't connected with you to yeah. say, hey, let's collaborate on a document. Yeah. yeah then, yeah, okay, point. that's probably going to be point. your red flag there. Good point. But um, it's an interesting use because it bypasses email, mm. scam, phishing filters. I must say, I look fairly dapper. What do you mean? <laughs> Fairly dapper here. Okay. Uh, okay. I sent you this one. Yeah. Um. Uh, yet another case <laughs> of how how our kids are bypassing. Yeah, this one got picked up in in new in mainstream news media talking about how how youth are or people taking classes are using. Uh, virtual backgrounds in places like Zoom to essentially uh, record themselves. They play it as a video, so yeah. it looks like the person's engaging, but in fact, it's just a video on loop. <laughs> the creativity of, of these young people is just amazing, right? Like, I, I mean, it's impressive, right? Uh, when I sent you this article, I read it, and she goes, yeah, this works really well until the teacher asks you a question. Oh! <laughs> right. Yeah, but there are ways around that too. I know, but we won't go into that, right? We don't want to promote it. I mean, Brandon has he's figured out a variety of different ways that you can bypass. I'm also on TikTok, and I watch people <laughs> doing other tactics in, time, know, in terms of to bypass Zoom. I know, I know, I know, I know. Could they bypass like Crowdcast, like what we're using? We, they don't use video. Oh, yeah, but we don't collaborate, work together. That's on true. Video. What if we're doing a? What if we're integrating with Zoom? Because remember, we integrate with Zoom sometimes, right? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing stopping us from. Okay. I mean, they could. I basically just use a virtual camera. You can in theory. Shh, 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 at www.zip.com. Just use shh, OBS. Com. Shh, shh, in virtual shh, camera. Shh, com. Shh. Zip. Okay. At. Okay. Beep. Next one. Uh, that's it. That's it. It's a. Sh it was a shorter week. In terms of news. That's true. We had Halloween and stuff, and I know you were busy with Candace doing some stuff on the line with Candace. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I, I laughed so hard. Yeah. I laughed. I laughed when I saw what you guys were doing. It was pretty cool. Hey, uh, how's your cat doing? Haptic, right? Haptic Haptic's to cat? doing good, How's yes. Haptic doing? And Haptic, he's a kind of a cross between a Persian and, what's the other one? Uh, Maine Coon. Maine Coon. And for those of you who don't know what a Maine Coon is, it's a basically a land lion, <laughs> right? I mean, they, they're, they're, I think they're the largest domestic cat. Yeah, I mean, he has the features definitely of a Maine Coon, but he's kind of the size of a Persian. He's a little bigger, though, I think. <laughs> do, do you think? I think, he, I think he's going to grow into a it's monster. Kind of, he's kind of like, like a size. He's kind of like a full-grown cat size He's already. getting there, and he's not that old. He's right? four months. He's four months old. Like I say, you brought him up the other day. He looks like Morris the cat, for the boomers remember Morris, right? Uh, anyways. So uh, he looks like Morris the cat, or Garfield. Garfield, Garfield as well. Right. He kind of looks like Garfield as yeah. well. So, but you, you brought him up. Like you bring him up every other week or so, and every week we kind of go, "Oh my God, is that the same cat?" Like it's cool. <laughs> uh, uh, your your aunt, uh, uh, my godmother, she had a Maine Coon, right? A purebred, mm -hmm. and that was huge, right? Kind of cool. Yeah, kind of cool. Yeah. So in fact, you, you guys doing what it is you guys do? You actually have a. Um, a haptic cam now on on him, right? Yes. <laughs> pretty cool. Yes. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. What else you got going on this week? Um, well, after this, after we're done here, after recording, we're gonna go do a you parent got, session. You got a parents presentation to do today. We are right? busy here in the studio. Yeah. How's the studio coming along? I, I mean, I, if, I think we're almost we're almost there. Right? A couple more upgrades over there, but that's yeah. pretty much finished. How's that new soundboard working for you? You got this. <laughs> Brandon got this new. Uh, z, um, it's called a Zoom, right? It's called a not, Zoom not, live track. Not as in Zoom the web webinar. But no, Zoom but it, the video recording it's, software. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's working. It, you can do some really cool things with it. Yes. It allows us to do a lot more cool audio routing and sound editing and whatnot. Cool. Yeah, we got yeah. A, we got some ideas surrounding that coming up. Yeah, pretty cool. All right. So, yeah, so on behalf of myself, Dapper Darren, 
and Brandon. Thank you all so much for joining us, and we'll see you again next week. Dr. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>